and say greetings, my brothers and my sisters. We thank God for you for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. We are grateful unto God that he has allowed us the opportunity to assemble ourselves together once more and again for our 1230 and 630 Bible study. That's right, our 1230 and 630 Bible study. And we are walking through the entire Bible. That's right, from Genesis to Revelation. We are studying the whole word for the whole man. And we're trying to reach the whole world. Tweet that. So we thank God for you. Let me pause and say that I am humbly grateful and eternally blessed that you have been supportive of this ministry uh, from day one. And I want to thank you because of your unwavering support and your sacrifice and your giving to support this ministry throughout the last year or so that we have been studying the Word of God. We also want to say unto you, we bid you God's speed and we thank God for your consistency in prayer and your financial support by sowing a spiritual need, you also reap a spiritual blessing. So as I sow unto you, you are blessed. Hallelujah, somebody. And where you are blessed, you ought to be a blessing. And with that being said, your prayers have been tremendously welcome and impactful. And so I want you to know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want you to also be mindful that in times like these in which we are living today, it is a time where there's a lot of negativity. There is a lot of challenging thoughts that you're going to encounter. In other words, there's a lot of bad stuff out here that's going to try to feed in on you. And you ought to start out the new year denouncing and declaring and decreeing that no drama here. Don't bring the negative stuff here. Keep that to yourself. Now, we will have to deal with the negatives of life. I get that. But at the same token, you're not somebody's Herbie. You're not a trash can. Don't allow anyone to use you as a dumping ground. Hello, somebody. When you see that, let me help you real quick. You need to weed your garden. That's right. It's kind of like you go through the house every now and then. It's called spring cleaning. Well, you need to do some Jesus cleaning. Tweet that. So I want to encourage you today. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. I want you to also help me. And God bless you. So glad to see so many of you logging on even as we speak. But I want you to help me and take out your mobile device at this hour. And if you will push the share button, just push share, share, share. If you will push the share button, every time you do that, you give the devil a fit. I promise you, it's working. Every time you share, yokes are being destroyed. Lives are being impacted. Somebody is hearing a word from the Lord. Today, we're going to talk about the patriarchal blessing of Jacob. How Jacob is going to bless each one of his sons. And we're going to try to break that down in a very practical way to show you how God works as it relates through generations. Did you not know that there is generational blessings? That's right. And there are generational curses. Hello, somebody. So again, I want you to tune in and I want you to hit the share button. Tag somebody, start a watch party. If you've ever posted anything on social media, please join in with me in these last and evil days. Let's tag, let's share, let's watch. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Now, I'm going to say unto you, uh, once again, happy, happy new year and have a blessed new year. And I'm actually typing that in uh, the comment section now. Uh, I'm also typing in the comment section uh, our online giving app. That's right, our online giving app. I'm not one of those persons that, amen, will be in worship and be on my phone doing other stuff. Hello, if I'm on it, I promise you, it's in relationship to worship. Online giving at givelify.com. That's right, givelify.com. I want you to sow your seed and to givelify.com, download that app. It's safe and secure. Also, I want you to visit us. That's right. Visit us 
on the World Wide Web at AMBC. That's right, y'all got it, 1840.org. And if you are not one of our friends, a part of our fellowship, our online discipleship, we want you to send an invite, a friend's invite, um, inbox us or send an invite. We will review your page and up on reviewing of your page, then we will accept or not accept. Everything is not conducive for the church's website. And so again, we don't have any personal stuff we want to put out there. You know, what you do with your life that's between you and God. However, when it comes to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be very, very mindful of what we advertise. And I know you understand that. Also, I want to say unto you, like us on Twitter and Instagram. We are updating our Instagram and our Twitter social media outlets. And so we want you to be a part of that fellowship as well. Oh, yeah, we're serious about 20 and 22. I preach Sunday. I'm done with 21. I'm done with 21. How many of y'all out there say, I'm done with 21? Come on, shout back at me. Say, I'm done with 21. I'm done with 21. Confirm that in your spirit. I'm done with 21. And I am seeking God's purpose as to what to do in 22. What to do in 22. Seeking God's purpose in 22. What to do in 22. Amen. I'm done with 21. Somebody shout, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with 21. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And so again, we thank God for you. We see so many shout outs. Let's keep in mind that there's going to be a eulogistic service here uh, this Friday. A eulogistic service here this Friday. And we're going to post that out. Brother John Walls. Brother John Walls, one of the senior members of the church years ago. Uh, the family has requested, amen, that we would host the funeral service here at the church. And so we're going to do our best to minister to the John Walls family. And I want you to pray for the M M Minningfield, uh, not the Minningfield, I'm sorry, the Hayfield. That's right. Pray for the Mayfield family. There it is. The Mayfield family and the John Walls family. Once again, let me correct it. Let me ask you to join in with us this Friday from 10 to 12 here at the Antioch Church from 10 to 12 will be the eulogistic service of Brother John Walls. Amen. A member of this church years and years ago, um, Sister Brenda Mayfield and the family has collectively united together. Some are coming from Detroit and other areas to show their respect. And then at 12 noon this Friday, we will have the eulogistic service. It will only be for one hour. So again, the wake will be from 11 to 12, and the eulogistic service will be at 12 to 1, and then we shall travel to Count Nelson. So pray with us as we try to combat this Omicron and this virus and all of these diseases that are flowing throughout our country. Oh my God, you got to take care of yourself. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We will post the funeral announcement on our webpage and on our social media outlets. Sister Kelly Groves, our church secretary, is doing a, a five-star job. Amen. She's doing a five-star job in gathering all this information so that we can share it with you. Now, it's prayer time. That's right. We're getting ready to pray. We're going to Genesis chapter 49. Pray with me. Father God, we love you. Thank you for the online fellowship, the online viewers who are viewing with us. Who have been with us down through the years and even up to this point. We thank you for those on the airwaves. Use whatever means necessary, whatever means necessary to communicate your word in such a time like this. Father God, we ask if you would, that you would impact our thoughts, impact our tongue, impact our speech, bring to our remembrance by the power of the Holy Spirit what you would have us to say in these last and evil days. We love you dearly now. We denounce and decree that the devil is a liar. And we pray that you would counsel any assignment of the devil. Counsel it, counsel it right now, Lord. Any assignment in the name of Jesus right now. Counsel it, kill it right now. Block it right now. We know we have to endure some things. But, oh God, we ask if it be your will, let your word go forth in power and might. 
in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Keep pushing the share button. That's right. Keep pushing the share button. Keep pushing your share button. I want to see Shara by your name. That's right. When your name comes up, it'll be an icon and say Shara. And all you got to do is just push the share button and immediately groups come up that are in your contact list and also your contacts as well. Tag someone. Start a watch party. I promise you they're going to be glad you did. Somebody's going to be helped because you stepped out on faith. What are we doing? We are evangelizing. That's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, by way of, you got it, social media. So this is called social media evangelization. And we are trying to reach the lost, the least, and the left out. And every time you share, we are reaching them. Oh, glory to God. So God bless you real good. Thank you so much. Now, let's go to Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I said, I am excited and I am delighted. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Now, as we come to Genesis 49, uh, we want to zero in, if it be the Lord's will, we want to zero in and look at the story of Jacob and his 12 boys, okay? This is very, very, very important that we are mindful of the fact that Jacob is getting ready to pass off the scene. That's right, he's an old man now. They are now in the land of Egypt. They are living in the suburbs of Egypt, the land of Goshen. And Joseph has now been elevated to second in command of all of Egypt. He is under Pharaoh. There are none, none, none who has the authority that Joseph has uh, to survive the famine. Joseph was the interpreter of the dream of Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh has elevated him. Hello, somebody. And God is able to take you through a process in order to get you processed. Tweak that. God wants to prepare you for your destination. Joseph has been through the fame. Oh, he's been through the flames, y'all. Been through the fire, been through the flood. Uh, he's had to deal with fake family, fake friends, foes. He's had to deal with temptation. He's had to, amen, be pulled out of a pit. He's been to prison. He's been falsely accused. He's been through it. But all of this, God led him to it to bring him through it. Hello, somebody. And so God allowed it. There it is in order for him to be elevated. What are you saying, preacher? There are some things in life, some experiences, some situations, some people, some encounters that we must endure as people of God. And it's not for our deterioration. It's for our elevation. Hello, somebody. And when I say elevation, it is to take you to another level of prayer, another level of growth, another level of maturity, another level of prosperity, another level of the outpouring blessedness of the true and the living God. And so with that being said, all of them have now gathered to Egypt. They're there and Joseph is in command and he brings all of his family together and he hasn't forgot where he's come from. No, he hasn't forgot where he's come from. And so he's brought them, uh, he has provided for them. They are now there and Jacob has gathered all of his sons together and their family. So it's not just Jacob and his boys. You'll find the text read very carefully that Jacob's boys had families. And so as Jacob speaks life into them and speaks over them, uh, this blessing is going to, that's right, follow through the entire lineage and genealogy of these boys for the rest of their existence and their generation. Now, with that being said, I want you to think for a minute about your family and about your lineage and your generation. And then I want you to think about what are you going to pass down to your family? What are you going to pass on when that hour comes and uh, old man death is knocking on your doors? And we don't always know when it's going to happen. But when we leave here, hallelujah somebody, what will be said about you? What will you leave behind? 
What will you pass on? What preparations are you making right now where you have it in writing? So when the time comes, your wishes will be carried out correctly. If you don't have it in writing, let me encourage you right now. You want to save a whole lot of hell and problems and, amen, disturbance in your family and lineage? Put it in writing. Trust me, I've been doing this for a little while, and I have seen some of the best of the best of families break apart, tear apart, hold grudges, no longer speak to each other, have nothing to do with each other. Property has been lost. State has come in and assessed it. Corp Amen. It continues over and over again. You find a lot of property in, that's right, in a state. Courts and courts have come in, taken the property. Other people come in and buy the property and then sell it back to us. Does that make sense? We've seen people where they're squandered. Amen. Hard earned trust accounts and savings accounts and how they have misused and mismanaged those things in life that our ancestors and fathers and mothers and grandfather and grandparents worked hard for. What are you saying, preacher? I know life is not just about things, but we do need things in life, right? So whatever you work hard for right now, I'm telling you, write it down, put it in a will, get it sealed, get you a pre-arrangement with a funeral home, get all of that done. Get it done now. So when the time comes, all they'll have to do is just zip Open up the envelope and read it. Case closed. Hallelujah. Jacob is doing that now while he's alive. That's what I'm trying to get you to. He is now preparing and bestowing upon on all of them what they're going to be blessed with. So he gathers all of the boys together, all of the families together, and he is now going to bestow the blessing of the patriarch. You remember that Abraham passed on the blessing to who? Isaac. Isaac then passed it on to his son who? Amen, you got it, Jacob. Now Jacob, whose name is Israel, is going to pass it on to his son. Now there's going to be a twist in this reading because the elder was normally the one traditionally that would get a double portion, a double portion, that's right. But in this particular text, that's not going to happen. Jacob is going to reverse that. He's going to change that. And one of the reasons why Jacob is going to do it is because of sin. That's right. And Jesus is not coming through that particular lineage. Jesus is coming through the tribe of Judah. And so you're going to see where the Holy Spirit guides Jacob in this blessedness of each son. I will also say one of the shouts that you can find in this text is a father who's in position to be a blessing. Let me try that one more time. A father who is in a position to be a blessing. If you are a father and you're listening to me out there, please do your earnest, do your best to be in a position to pass a blessing on to your children, to pass a blessing on, amen, to your family. Are y'all listening to me? Be in a position, something. You may not be able to pass on a Bugatti, but at least don't pass on a burden. Hallelujah. I believe that our families, our children would be better off if men, men, I'm talking men, had worked hard and put themselves in a position to be a blessing to their lineage, their generation, before they passed off the scene. And so as a result of that, you have so many young people, so many families that are out here dwindling in the wind because no one set aside anything from them. No one made sure they had something Something, amen, something. And so here we find that Jacob is in that seat. Are y'all ready? All right, let's go. Now, when you turn to Genesis 49, I read in your hearing in our last session, the first few verses of the prophecy Jacob is looked upon as a prophet. That's right. Because he's actually pronouncing prophecy. He's speaking that which is yet to come. He is speaking that which is yet to come. He is prophesying, foretelling, and foretelling that which shall come. That's called prophecy. 
All right? God raised up prophets to what? Foretell and foretell that which is yet to come as God had ordained. All right? So I believe in prophecy. Oh, yes, I do. I believe in it. And so he's gathered all his sons together, and here we go. Now, verse 1, I want you to be very, very careful as you look. Keep pushing the share button on your phone. Just keep sharing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Here we go. Genesis chapter 49, the prophecy. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Look at that. In the latter days. All right. Verse 2. Genesis 49. Verse 2. Genesis 49. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. All right. Now, stay with me. Stay with me. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. That's right. Somebody's going to be blessed because you did that. Thank you so much. Verse 3. Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might and the beginning of my strength. You are my firstborn, Reuben. How many of y'all know there's nothing like the firstborn? Oh, glory to his name. I said there's nothing like the firstborn. You are my firstborn. There's so many hopes that you have for the firstborn. So many aspirations you have for the firstborn. Firstborn, Reuben, you are my firstborn. Oh, my heart was filled with joy when you were born. Oh, Reuben, you're the leader of the pack. You're the elder. My might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Oh, Reuben, a lot is placed upon your shoulders as the elder. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Now, what you see in verse 3, watch this, go and bless you. Reuben, you have been destined to do great things. Reuben, you have been destined to be powerful and mighty. Reuben, you have been destined to exceed and, ex and soar beyond your wildest dreams. Watch this. But you did not because you chose not. Verse 4. Reuben, all the hopes we had for you, you're as unstable as water. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Y'all don't hear me. What did James say? Let not that person who's unstable think that they shall receive anything from the Lord because they're double-minded. Huh? An unstable person is what? Unstable in all their ways? Reuben, you are unstable. You don't have balance in your life, Reuben. You've got all of these distractions and you're pulled left and right, back and forth. You don't remain steadfast and unmovable. You make unwise choices. You're unstable. <clears throat> we can't count on you. Unstable means what, y'all? Unstable. Therefore, you shall not excel. And then he tells them why. What he's saying is, there shall be no prophet or no ruler. And really, he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. No impactful ruler or prophet shall come out of your genes. That's right. Your genealogy will not produce such. Because you have cast, watch this. Watch this, a sin upon your generation that shall follow them because they're going to emulate you. You've placed in them a seed that God is not pleased with. You've placed in them a characteristic trait that God is not pleased with. Now you're going to be blessed, things are going to happen, but what we had, what was planned for you you dropped the ball, Reuben, because of your immortality, your immorality, your flesh, 
Hello. Because you went up to your father's bed and you defiled it and you went up to my couch. That's what he did. In other words, Reuben, I don't know fully what happened in Genesis 35 and 22, but I do know this. All we know is that Reuben went to, watch this, one of Jacob's wives, a concubine. Remember, Leah and Rachel was Jacob's wives, but he also had two concubines, Bilhah and Zilpha. Well, he goes to Bilhah. That's what he does. And a concubine, in essence, is a wife with no rights. Oh, good God Almighty. Tweet that. She's a mistress that's not a missus. Hello, somebody. I wish I had somebody out there. Know what I'm talking about. So what Reuben did, he took advantage of a situation. And when he took advantage of this situation, he knew that this woman was distraught and vulnerable. And he took advantage of a situation and he should not have done that. And he created, watch this, the sin of incest to a certain degree. That's what he's did. So he's combined fornication with adultery. And Jacob said, I never forgot that. That wounded me. That wounded me. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I don't want to dig too deep right there because we got to get through here. And I'm not going to rush. Might not make them all. This is a lot to chew on. There are many families. I wish somebody would talk to me. There are many relationships. There are many lineages that have suffered. Why? Because somebody decided... They was going through the back door. You'll catch that later. Somebody decided they was going to tiptoe around the tulips. Somebody in the family now, in the family, decided. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that seed has suffered throughout generations. He said, because you did this, you have cast a spirit, a character trait in your seed. And so you've lost your position as being the one who shall receive the double portion. You've lost it. You've lost it. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Verse 5. But you're guilty of the same stuff. Uh, your instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. You went into a country. You went into a town. Back in Genesis 34. 25 through 29. I'm not going to go back. I've already been over. You were upset and anger got the best of you because your do my daughter, your sister was violated by a prince in Shechem. And because she was violated, she was raped, she was taken. You retaliated and led a band into that country, into that village, into that area, and you massacred every man. It was the massacre of my days. It was worse than the Valentine's Day massacre. You murdered every man alive. The blood was running through the streets. Blood was running throughout the land. Took advantage, then you plundered the city. You destroyed houses, took people hostage, burned down homes and villages. You discarded my name. And because you did that, O oh my soul, do not come unto their secret, unto their assembly. My honor with them do not be united. For in their anger they killed a man. See that? And in their self-will they dug down a wall. Cursed be their anger. Look at that. Verse 7. <clears throat> for it was furious and their wrath for it was cruel. What you did was wrong. You brought shame to my name. I had to watch over my back because now the other nations had teamed up against me. And scattered them in Israel. 
So he's telling them that your tribe, your genealogy will be scattered. Part of you will be here and part of you will be there. Well, let's dig a little deeper. Because of your anger, because you have an anger management problem, leadership would not be bestowed upon you. No, 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 no. You have an anger problem. And you know what? I got to say this. Now, I'm talking about Simeon and Levi. They're elder brothers as well. They're not the younger. They're the elder brothers as well. But I got to say this. Anger, watch this, can be good when it's ordained of God. It's called spiritual indignation. You remember when Jesus went in and destroyed the temple? Uh, merchants in the temple and turned over money? Well, that's called righteous anger. That's when you upset and displeased at the behavior and actions of someone. You have every right to show a disregard and disgust for racism and injustice. Every right. Because that's sin. Hello, somebody. You have a right to be upset when you're mistreated and abused. Amen. You got a right. Somebody say a right. But here's the problem with this particular situation. They took it upon themselves to take human life. And not only to take human life, but they took it upon themselves to send a message throughout the land. They acted in rage. There you go. They acted in rage. And Jacob said, you're going to be scattered. Off. You'll never be at peace. In other words, you won't find a permanent resting place. You will be divided. You will be divided. Ain't God all right. That's what he's telling them. You will be divided. And you will be a part of the priestly tribe of Israel. Now, why is that important? What did the priestly tribe of Israel, Levites, do? They maintained the temple. They handled the sacrifices. So every time, here was their task, here was their challenge. Every time a sacrifice was brought to the temple, please listen to this. They, was the one, they were the ones that had to what? You got it. Slaughter the animal. That's right. Can you imagine working in a slaughterhouse all of your life? Slaughter. slaughter. All you ever saw was blood. All you ever saw was the, was the deterioration and better yet, the sacrifice of animals, the smell of stench and blood. That's what they had to do. That's how they ended up as serving in the temple. That was one of their main functions, was to oversee the temple and provide service in the temple as it relates to sacrifices. Inspect the animals. That's right. Give approval for the sacrifice. Clean the altar. Clean the sacrificial instruments. They had to deal with anger, the anger of God. Hello, sin. Because of sin, there had to be sacrifices. The sacrifices did not wash away sin. They made atonement. So if you did something, you had to bring a sacrifice to God. Well, Jesus cleared all that up on the cross. Hallelujah. So he's letting them know your anger got the best of it. Let me help you, brothers and sisters. Be careful about folk with anger management issues. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. It's something abnormal, something not balanced with someone who has no filter, who will just overact and overreact at the drop of a hat. Are y'all with me? It will get the best of them in the long run. As a matter of fact, Anger management is a prevalent and very much a live spirit in our community, is it not? Anger management. People just flip off for any reason now. I mean, just any reason. And I'm not saying be judgmental. I'm saying beware of people with anger management issues. People with anger management issues will hurt themselves and they will hurt everything around them. Because when you go to that level, where your whole chemical balance is out of balance and you do things, when you come down from that particular hyenas, you're like, oh my God, is that what I did? They say there's a certain chemical that's released when you get angry in so much you don't even feel pain sometimes. That's dangerous, y'all. And granted, I said earlier, there is righteous anger and then there's unrighteous anger. So he's letting them know because of your unrighteous anger and your what? 
behavior and how you carried this hideous slaughter out, you'll be scattered. That's right. Now, Judah, here we go, verse 8. Now, this is the daddy talking. You are he whom your brother shall praise. Judah. Yip. Ha. Huh. Watch this. In the Hebrew, it means yip. Ya, yip means Yahweh. Ha. Huh. A hada. It's hada, yip. Yip, hada. That's what it is. Yip, hada, Hebrew. Yip, Yahweh, hada, praise. So, Judah, you shall be called praise. Now, watch this. Watch this. Your brethren shall praise you. Now, this is pointing to Jesus Christ. Your hand shall be the neck of your enemies, which means that you will be victorious in choking out your enemies. Watch this. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is the lion's whelp. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. The lion's whelp. From the prey, now, the lion's whelp, normally, watch this, the lion is always seeking prey, right? Because the prey never seek the lion. You're going to be the lion's whelp. Now, watch this. I got to get this out here. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. A lion standing on his feet. This remembers, this is in remembrance of the tribe of Judah. You shall be like a lion, like a roaring lion. As an old lion, full of strength and ferocity. And who shall rouse him up? Who would be so foolish as to what? Stir him up and cause him to be angry and fierce and come after them. Who would dare challenge the lion? The lion is called what? King of the jungle. So he's letting them know that through you, Judah, will come forth a king who shall rule, shall stand strong, and shall be fierce. Watch this. He ain't through. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. It means a staff of office and authority. King shall flow. Royalty, watch this, shall always be with the house of Judah. Don't miss this. Please don't. Now, he's letting them know that this authority that you have will never leave Judah because it's going to Jesus Christ and no one can dethrone him. Don't miss this, y'all. So that's why Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root and the offspring of David, Jesse. He's called that because out of Judah comes Jesus Christ. So when you come together to praise God, y'all better hear me. When you come together to lift up the name of Jesus, blessings come down because you are worshiping the one that has been prophesied who is coming to redeem the world. Oh, glory to his name. And did he not do that out on the cross? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So he's letting them know throughout your generation, this is what's going to happen with the tribe of Judah. Read on. Until shallow, verse 10, come. Shallow means glory. So he's saying Jesus is shallow. In other words, the one who's going to bring the glory of God. Everything that Jesus did was about the glory of God. Did you know that? And God's going to get the glory. He's not going to share his glory with nobody. Oh, I wish I had somebody knew what I'm talking about. He's not going to share with nobody. Oh, glory to his name. Are y'all praying with me? Keep sharing. He's not going to share his glory with nobody. Please catch this. The entire word for the whole man, for the whole world. Stay with me. Watch this. Go and bless you. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Jesus is going to bring a full circle and gather all mankind together. 
The United Nations is not going to do it. Republicans are not going to do it. Democrats are not going to do it. Are y'all listening? We sure ain't going to do it because oftentimes we the church are divided. Hello? The Lord is going to gather everybody together. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Binding his foal unto the vine and his animal's coat with the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Underline blood. Underline blood. Now we're pointing to the sacrificial Lamb of God whose blood shall wash all sins away. Now what this is telling us, without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sin. Notice again, the vine speaks of fruit. So you're going to be productive. That's what he's telling you. He said, you're going to be successful, Judah. You're going to have fruition. You're going to prosper. You're going to advance. You're going to be victorious. But it won't happen without some sacrifice. Oh, I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. So blood's going to be shed. Huh? Why is it that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die? Everybody wants to be victorious, but we don't want to shed no blood. Martin Luther King, Nat Turner, Sojourner Truth. I can go on down the line. Harry Tubman, are y'all with me? Fannie Lou Hamer, I can go on. Hello, somebody. Malcolm X, I can go on. Any great movement in history, especially black and brown people's history, in our history, there was blood that was shed. And somebody right now, you shedding some blood, sweat, and tears in order to pour back into your family. Lord have mercy. I'm teaching better than some of y'all saying amen out there. There must be some sacrifice. So you get wine from grapes. How do you get wine from grapes? It's squeezed. And God has to squeeze us. Good God Almighty. To get some good stuff out of us. We don't like it. No, we don't like it. We don't like being squeezed. No, we don't like that. And so here we find in the text. That he prophesies. Notice this. His eyes shall be red with wine. Look at that. His teeth white as milk. It's almost part of the revelation. We're talking about his eyes like a flame of fire. Huh? He's talking about the pre-incarnate Christ. He's talking about the glorified Christ. And his eyes deal with <coughs> judgment. Excuse me. Deals with judgment. How he's able to discern. That's right. And pierce through. And his word is like a two-edged sword, is it not? It cuts coming and going. All right? Now we go to Zebulun. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea and shall be for a haven of ships. And his brother shall be unto Zidon. Now, right here, this is dealing with occupational blessings, seaport, trade, as relates to, you got it, maritime. What is maritime? That's dealing with commerce. Did you not know a lot of our merchants and a lot of our goods come across waters in large tankers? Large, that's what he's saying. You're going to be one of the epic seaport administrators throughout the entire world. Commerce is coming through you, through your sea. You shall dwell as a haven, as a haven. In other words, you will occupy the waters. That's right. Oh, God is setting them up. And notice each one of the blessings, God is making sure that each sea has some type of resource to survive. Even though some things they've done, they should not have done, God is making sure it happens. So he's letting them know that. Issachar is a strong as couching down between two burdens, he saw that rest was good and that the land it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear. So notice here, and became a servant unto tribute. Notice here, he's dealing with agriculture areas now. He laid down to rest and he's dealing with the agriculture of development of vegetables. You shall be great in farming. That's what he's telling them, in agriculture development. And we need vegetables, do we not? Look at the blessings of God. Cattle eat from agriculture. Sheep eat from agriculture. Come on, talk to me. Cow, we need 
cornbread. We need grain grows from agriculture. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We need collard greens and cabbage and sweet potatoes and all of that grows from agriculture. Corn, all of that grows from agriculture, all right? So he's pronouncing a blessing upon them as well and his seed. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path and bite the horse's heels so that his rider shall fall backwards. Now, Dan is going to be a ruler. That's right. And he's able to do that because you'll keep in mind the tribe of Dan was engaged in idolatry like no other tribe. Uh-huh. So he's dealing with how that as a ruler, you practice in idolatry as a ruler. Now watch this. Eventually, the Dan, the tribe of Dan is going to be omitted. Why? Because God does not, there you go, condone idolatry. Notice what, it's te notice what it says here. You got to catch this, y'all. And I know this seems boring, but it's quite knowledgeable, quite needed. An adder in the path, a most venomous serpent. You've cast a spirit into your seed, a spirit that seeks to rule, watch this, in darkness and black magic and in the behavior of such. See, I have waited for your salvation, O oh Lord. So he's, he's letting them know God has been patient for you to make a turn. Are y'all with me? Huh? Dan shall be a serpent by the way. He's going to constantly be a thorn. That's what he's, let, that's what he's saying. You're going to constantly be a thorn. You're going to constantly be a stumbling block. Can you imagine having a, a generation of kids that, is, that are stumbling blocks in the way? Huh? And that, again, 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 as you read on, as you read on, it was Dan that actually introduced a lot of the idolatry in Israel in Judges chapter 18. You read that. But in Revelation, the numbering of the tribes of Revelation in chapter 7, you go to Revelation chapter 7, you'll find that Dan is omitted. I'm trying to help you to see something. Are y'all with me? Now, all right, verse 19, Gad, he's continuing on, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Talking about Gad. Gad will be an overcomer at last, which means that right now you're going to be oppressed, but in the end, I'm going to bring you out. You're going to be, you're going to start out but then you're going to have to endure some, some obstacles and challenges. But I'm going to make sure at the end, you overcome all that has overcome you. See, that's what he's telling them. That's what the characteristic that is in your seed. Are you, are you with me? Your troop, a troop shall overcome. You're going to have forces coming against you, Gad. And you shall overcome those forces at last. Now, when you read the New Testament, I don't have time to deal with it. I don't want to get too deep. Because I'm going to lose some of y'all. But when you find Jesus crossing over to the other side, you'll notice that a demonic man met him, the Bible says. He was called what? Legion. He said, who are you? He said, Legion, I'm many. He was from the Gadarenes. Y'all missing this. I got to help you. When Joshua crossed over, there were two tribes that did not go when Joshua crossed over the waters. Some of them stayed and some of them went. One of those was Gad. Check me if you don't believe me. And they stayed over to the other side. Well, what was at the other side? It wasn't the promised land. It was idolatry. It was heathenism. So that spirit from generation to generation carried on. It is believed that the demonic man was actually from the tribe of Gad. Who dwelt in the territory of the Gadarene. Y'all better hear me. That's generate, and that man was cursed. He had many demons. Don't tell me. Don't tell me 
that blessings don't follow you and don't tell me that curses don't follow you. Now, I'm not saying to paint a picture that it's all morbid because and deplorable because you can start again. Oh, glory. That's the, that's the loving thing about God. You, can, you can't help what somebody did before you, but you sure can help what you're going to do with your future. And you can help by pulling your family inside and getting them together and telling them, say, look, here's where we come from, but here's where we're going. As of this day, me and my house shall serve the Lord. And every now and then you see these traits in our children, don't we? We see it in our family, and we say, just like Uncle Junebug, just like Ain't Meatloaf, just like Granddaddy Cornbread, just like Grandmama Pot Pie, you know, just like Cousin, come on, Kool-Aid. You know, we see this in our family traits over and over again. But we have to bind that spirit and we have to preach and declare that this will stop. We're going to start again. I'm done with 21. I'm seeking God's purpose and what to do in 22. Are y'all with me? Watch this. Now, he lets him know. He lets him know. He lets Gad know. Now watch this. And I'm going to stop here in a minute. Verse 20. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. And he shall be loyal. Thank you, Jesus. Asher, Asher he's, gonna, he's a welcomer. He's, he's the one that has an excellent. He's the one that has a spirit of excellency in presenting and welcoming. Asher, you shall be one that will have an abundance of an excellent presentation for the king. You're going to make sure that he is magnified, recognized, and glorified. Your seed and your generation will always be that generation that presents the beauty and the ambiance of the excellencies of the presentation in relationship to the worship, amen, and the reverence of God. Naphtali is a hind, a female deer, let loose. He gives goodly words. Naphtali will have wonderful words. He's one that speaks positive. Naphtali is looked upon as a positive generation. Now notice all these generations, all these children, and you only see a few of them that have positive traits. Huh? Which means all of our children got something wrong with them. And uh, it doesn't mean they have to stay like that, but it also tells me that all of our families are dysfunctional. Yes, it are. yes they are. All of our families are dysfunctional. We don't like to say that, but we have it in all of our families. But thank God. I said, thank God that every now and then God will raise up one of our family members, whether it's a child or a grandchild, and they will be different. And they will make a difference. Guess what? That's Joseph. We're going to stop. We're going to come back to Joseph next week. I want you to read ahead. Joseph is the one, along with some of the others, but Joseph is the main one that came up out of this dysfunctional family and made a difference for the rest of the family. Are you seeing where I'm going? Just because things do start out wrong, it doesn't mean they have to end wrong. They can end right. Hello. Just because it started out wrong doesn't mean it has to end up wrong. And not only that, although things do start out right, they can end up wrong. Yeah, that's right. But God is able to reverse the cycles. Yes, he is. He's able to do that. But we have to be able and be willing to submit to make that change as well. We want to place it all on God? God said, no. You've got a part to play too. How you carry yourself, your characteristics, how you pass down advice and your behavior and mannerism around your seed. It may be sarcastic to you. It may be funny to you, but everything is not funny. And everything is not, uh-uh, no, 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 no. There are some things you got to refrain from. Hello, somebody. So I want to pause right there. We're going to pick it up next time. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, we want to hear from you. And you can reach us many ways. You can meet, reach us at ambc1840.org. Go to our website. There's an email icon. Click on that. Also, you can reach us by way, that's right, of online. 
whether that's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, any of our social media outlets. Also, sow a seed, online giving. Asking everybody to sow a seed right now. Sow a seed, sow a seed. Give God a thanks offering. A thanks offering is seven. Amen. Somebody can give $7. Somebody can give $70. Somebody can give $7,000. Somebody can even give, let me go back, $17. Sow a seed of seven for the month of January. That's right. Sow your seed of seven. Amen. A thanksgiving offering, a thankful offering of seven. Seven means completion, perfection. And actually, we're going to pray over your offerings as you give these $7, these sevenfold offerings, whether $7, $17, $70, $700, or $7,000. And somebody, who knows? God is so awesome. I'm not going to doubt it. God is able to drop $70,000. God is able to drop $700,000. God is able to drop $7 million. That, how big is your God? Those are little numbers compared to the God I serve. So a seed. We're going to pray of it right now. And as we prepare to pray, I want to pray for you. Everybody. Needs to be a member of a church. Everybody needs a church home. Glory. That's right. Everybody needs, <coughs> excuse me. Everybody needs a church home. And I want to encourage you to unite with this church. That's right. Be an online disciple, online follower. Continue to follow us on social media. And not only follow us on social media, but also want to welcome you to the physical church here at Antioch. We are open. That's right. The doors of the church are open. I'm talking physical church. And so I want to invite you to be a member of this church. And if not, I'll send you where you want to go. A, B, C. A, criteria for being a follower of Christ. A, you got to be a sinner. He's only accepted sinners. Hallelujah. Sinner. S-I-N-N-E-R. That's right. One who falls short of the glory of God. Is that you? Acknowledge that you are a sinner. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. C, confess with your mouth. That's right. If you're willing to do that, I'll pray with you now as, as you sow your seed as well. Father, thank you for our viewers. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out, and thank you for your word, for your word is true. Glorify your name now. We love you dearly. Touch every listener, every home. May your word have free course. Thank you for the life of Jacob and his sons and their lineages. The people of God, the apple of your own eye. We ask, O oh God, now as we prepare now for the rest of this week, that you would lead us and guide us and keep us. Remember those who are sick and afflicted. Remember the John Walls family, the Mayfield family. And, O oh God, remember all families during this wicked and evil day in which we live. We need you, Lord. Can't make the journey without you. Pray for all who are affected by this virus, those in hospitals those on ventilators, and even families that are dealing with bereavement. We ask now that you remember our children in the public school system. Remember, oh God, the stats are increasing, but we know you got your hand upon us. Keep us. We love you dearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. I want to encourage you to stay safe, stay sane. That's right. And don't forget to wear your mask. Stay masked up. And also, listen, make sure that you get your vaccine and your booster. And if you choose not, amen, it's your choice, but at least do this. Talk to your health provider and ask them for some advice. Drink plenty of fluids, vitamin C, get you some zinc. Hello, build up your immune system so the antibodies in your body, your cells can fight off the germs and a lot of the healing that takes place. Our bodies just need what they need, what it needs in order to fight back. That's right. Be safe out there. Stay sane and stay masked up. God bless you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day and a beautiful week is my prayer. See you Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We got a new Sunday school lesson. When the church prays, what happens when the church prays? Oh, you better join in on 9 o'clock and for those that can't be here physically, we'll send you the study outline. Amen. Just let us know. Give us the address. Contact the church. Drop us a letter here in the mail. Amen. We'll get it to you. And send a little donation to the Sunday school. Lord, going to bless you. 
And then at 10, 15 a.m. is our worship service. Good God Almighty. There's going to be some preaching in the house this upcoming Sunday. God bless you. Happy New Year. Stay blessed. Thank you.